Hi, we are doing series of video lectures in digital communication. We started with module number five, spread spectrum technologies. We did one module, uh, one video over this module, module number five. This is the second module. First module was introduction of spread spectrum technology. That where there we have seen uh, what why we need a, a spread spectrum technology. We have seen that power level can be improved or it can improved in the sense it can be reduced drastically so that signal goes undetectable. If your signal is a very low power levels, it will be looking like noise and will go undetectable in the channel. Second, we provide additional bandwidth which helps in providing redundant bit. So additional spectral redundancy is a feature that is provided by signals spread spectrum technology. And how do we spread this signal with the help of pseudo random noise PN sequence. So today we're gonna our topic of discussion is going to be this PN sequence. I told you this is nothing but a binary bit sequence. Okay, which have certain characteristics and certain properties. So we're gonna study all of them uh, one by one. Okay, so let us see here pseudo random noise sequence. Okay, so there are many kind of ways that you can generate or there are many kind of pseudo random noise. The most widely used is maximum length sequence MLS. It is a type of pseudo random noise normally known as PN sequence. Okay, so they are bit sequence generated using linear feedback shift resistors. So how do you generate PN sequence? You're going to generate PN sequence with the help of shift resistors. And what are the basic building blocks of shift resistors? Flip flops. Okay, so any logic we can use, you know, any simple logic of uh, any kind of gates we can use and uh, create this shift resistor. Suppose you want left shift or right shift. Normally, um, the right uh, right or the left shift are pre preferred. Okay, so we can see it. Once we do the examples, you'll have better understanding what are the linear feedback shift resistors. We are not going into detail of it because I assume that you have studied that in digital communication. Uh, no, not digital communication, digital electronics. The most important thing that uh, you need to understand is these code are periodic. This is the characteristics of PN sequence generator. Okay, suppose uh, to have the functionality of shift resistors, you have used four flip flops. Okay, <clears throat> now since you have used four flip flops, what will be the length of PN sequence? It will be given by this relationship here. Okay. 2 raised to m minus 1. Suppose m is the number of flip. Suppose you have used 4 flip flops. So 2 raised to 4 minus 1. That is 16 minus 1. The length of PN sequence is going to be 15 bits. 15 bits combination of zeros and ones. That will be the length of PN sequence. Okay. So between 0 to 15 or between 1 to 15, I can say whatever clock pulses, it will remain different after 15 it will start repeating so it is periodic in nature so the first state what from where you have started the same state will repeat after 15 clocks that's what i wanted to say so this is periodic in nature that is the basic characteristics okay initial state you should not take 0 0 0 suppose you have used four flip flops to generate uh, to have functionality of shift register so initial state you cannot use 0 0 you cannot provide the input as 0 0 0 to all the flip flops then you are not going to get anything. You'll get 0, 0, 0 every time. Even after whatever shifting you do, you'll get 0, 0, 0, right? So you should avoid 0 vector. It won't work. Okay. Also, the functionality is pretty much like XOR gate. Okay. So you can see uh, what are the most uh, useful way we can use PN sequence. So it is used in direct spread spectrum and frequency hopping spread spectrum. Okay. So in both both the techniques that we're going to study in upcoming videos, we're going to use PN sequence to provide additional bandwidth to an narrow band signal. Okay. Let us see how it is generated. So how a PN sequence can be generated. So this is a setup. This is a simple setup. Okay. Let us say uh, you you have you are generating a shifting shifting phenomena. You are generating a shifting functionality using four uh, flip-flops or four registers like that okay 
and you wanted to provide shift resist uh, left shift okay or right shift let us say right shift if you're looking at the screen it is like right shift okay so how do you provide this shifting so there is a simple relationship okay uh, this kind of relationship okay you can see here linear feedback shift resistors we'll use so a length of um, MLS generating system with a shift resistor of length 4. So we have a shift resistor whose length is 4. It has 4 uh, flip-flops connected together. You can see here what is A3. A3 is actually the combination of A1 and A0. But not the normal combination, not the normal addition of A1 and A0. It is modulo 2 addition. This plus sign here, it is in a, this is not normally a plus sign. This is a plus sign with a circle surrounded by a circle, okay. So this is a modulo 2 adder, not just a normal addition. So A3 is A0 plus A1. So A0 and A1 will combine together to give you A3, but modulo addition again, modulo 2 addition basically. What is A2? A2 is A3. So A3 will be shifted. A3 will be shifted. So whatever was in A3 will be shifted and that will become the value of A2. So what is the value of A1? So A2 will be shifted. So A1 is nothing but the value of A2. What is the value of A1? Sorry, A0. A0 is nothing but A1. So just this kind of shifting, okay. The left shift or the right side, the way you see to. So for me, it is left. For you, it is right. Okay. Anyway, so right shift, basically, I can say. All right. So this is the way we are going to do it. So <clears throat> you can see here the plus represents modulo to addition or the normal addition and in some ways this functionality is probably looking like XOR. I have told you the logic that we use is equivalent to XOR operation. Okay. And we should avoid using zero vectors at the initial state. So if you put zero vectors means all the, all the input if you provide zero. Okay. If you provide uh, 0, 0 as the initial state, you won't get anything. So 0 vector is an exception here. All right. Okay. What are the properties of PN sequence? So there are three properties of PN sequence. The first property is called balance property. Second property is called run property. And third property is called autocorrelation property. What is the balance property? So balance property says that a PN sequence of particular length will have equal number, will have uh, zeros and one occurrence, but number of ones are going to be greater than number of zeros. By how much? By one unit. What I mean is, suppose there are eight, if the PN sequence is having length seven. If a PN sequence will have length seven, suppose I'm using three, three flip flop. So what is the length of PN sequence? Okay. Uh, if I'm using uh, three flip, wait a second. If I'm using three flip flops for shift resistor, okay. Then how much the length, of, what is the length of PN sequence? Length of PN sequence is going to be two raised to three minus one. So 2 raised to 3 minus 1, 7. So out of 7, according to balance property, out of 7, there will be 4 ones and 3 zeros. So once number, the count of 1 will always exceed by the count of 0 by 1. Suppose there are, if you have used 4 flip-flops, okay, if you have used um, 4 flip-flops, m is equal to 4 flip-flops, okay. So if you use four flip flops, then you have two raised to m minus one. That is 15, 16 minus one gives you 15. Okay. So always length of a PN sequence is going to be an odd number. Okay. So out of 15, eight ones and seven zeros. So you see the, ex the count of one exceeds by the count of zero by an amount of one. Okay. So that is basically the balance property. Okay. And 
the what is run property okay so if you see here you can read the same thing here i did not read it but you can read it that what is the balance property so you'll have 2 raised to m minus 1 is the length of p and cqs out of that you have 2 raised to m minus 1 ones and 2 raised to m minus 1 minus 1 zeros so if you put m is equal to uh, 4 here you will get 15 out of 15 2 raised to 4 minus 1 that is 3 2 raised to 8 will be ones and 8 minus 1 7 zeros okay run property is a subsequence of so you will have an initial initially you will have a pn sequence of certain length in that length sometimes ones and zeros are repeated so that repetition consecutive repetition is equal to one run and according to the observation so whatever is the pn sequence okay run length is given by this suppose pn sequence So if M is equal to four flip flops, okay, then PN sequence is going to be two raised to four minus one. That is 15. What will be the run length? Run length is two raised to M minus one, four minus one that is 2 raised to 3 8 so run length is going to be 8 this is the formula for run length if uh, that is 2 raised to 2 raised to m minus 1 you see in the power 2 raised to m minus 1 2 raised to 4 minus 1 3 so 2 raised to 3 gives you 8 so that is the run length so out of 8 out of 8 these consecutive sequences out of 8 okay out of 8 half that means 4 4 will be of length 1 okay now how many remaining if 4 will be of length 1 so out of 8 4 will be of length length 1 now how many remaining 4 are remaining out of 4 half that means 2 2 will be of length 2 now how many remaining so 4 plus 2 6 are utilized out of 8 remaining are 2 out of 2 half half of 2 is how much 1 1 will be of length 1 sorry 3 Will be of length 3 half will be of length 1 okay after that whatever remaining in that half will be of length 2 now whatever remaining in that half will be of length 3 we'll understand this one with an example do not stress much so this is what a run length is first of all you'll find what is the length uh, run length and then we'll try to explore how many uh, of bit 1 how many of bit to how many of bit three runs okay this is uh, the property and third one is autocorrelation property it is like a chronica delta function so you take the polar form of uh, uh, pn sequence okay and then multiply with uh, the present and previous bit present and the current uh, sorry previous bit okay or present or the future bit if anyway you can see the same thing you should get either n okay i don't know why this you should either get n okay when you put n is equal to 0 here you should get n what is n n is the length of pn sequence suppose uh, four flip flops then pn sequence is going to be of length 15 so when you put n is equal to 0 in this equation i am not explaining what is correlation or what is autocorrelation I hope you have I assume that you have an understanding I'm directly using the Kronika Delta function okay this is the way we re, uh, we reflect any correlation 
okay if you put n is equal to 0 then you should get capital n if you put n is equal to 1 then you should get minus 1 so we're going to take one problem and we'll try to verify these properties let us take this find see here this might this can come as a question find the output of following ml sequence ml means maximum length pn sequence generator and verify the properties of pn sequence so we have three properties balance run and autocorrelation assume the initial state of shift resistor is 1 0 0 0 so four bits are given so okay so this is how it is okay you can see here initial state that is clock zero initial state that is clock zero is given as one zero 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 okay let me tell you that a3 a3 is going to be the addition of a0 and a1 so if you remember this figure a3 a3 is the addition of a0 and a1 okay so if you can see here in the table a0 and a1 is 0 and 0 so 0 and 0 will add together to give you 0 and that 0 will come here what happens next this one is one will be shifted here right shift zero one will be shifted here then next will be shifted here next will be shifted here like this you'll get the next sequence again you add z 0 0 you'll get 0 again like that you keep on shifting and adding basically what you do is uh, you do the XOR of these last two columns when you will end up doing it keep on shifting and doing it you will see that uh, two similar bit a1 and a0 0 0 gives you 0 two dissimilar bit 1 and 0 gives you 1 okay so like that you keep on doing you can populate this complete table and you can see at 15th clock whatever was the initial state I have marked in dark brown uh, dark orange strip initial you see clock 0 was 1 triple 0 the same started repeating at the 15th clock that means including 0 it is 16th so overall length is 15 the 16th clock which is mentioned as 15 here including 0 is again 1 triple 0 so you understand how to do it okay so if, if you see this figure a3 is nothing but a0 and a1 okay how we are doing is we take in here one second we take a1 a2 a0 and a3 so initial state is 1 0 0 0 this is given by the clock 0th clock now according to the figure a0 and a1 will be added together to give you a3 so 0 plus 0 gives you 0 wait a second will give you 0 okay and this will be shifted these values will be shifted values so 1 will be shifted here 0 will be shifted here this 0 will be shifted here this is clock one next what you will do is again you will add a0 and a1 so 0 and 0 you will add what you will get a3 is a3 will be 0 again now you do the shift again so Z, 0 will be shifted here 1 will be shifted here this 0 will be shifted here this is going to be clock 2 okay now again a0 and a1 will be added together to give you 3 a3 so 1 plus 0 is going to give you 1 0 will be shifted here so 0 this 0 will be shifted here 0 and this one is shifted here 1 so this is clock pulse 3 like this you go on doing it okay 
you will see that at the 15th clock whatever was the initial state okay 1 triple 0 will be so the length overall length the overall length here is equal to 15 what is our output output is nothing but a naught so whatever is the value of a naught here in the table if you see triple 0 under this particular column a naught okay that so we have seen that uh, how we are getting we are getting with the help of this formula that i am raising all so initial states are one triple zero and keep on doing it like this let us check the properties now one by one first of all what is the sequence we have so whatever under the column of a naught that is our pn sequence if you can see here uh, you will notice i don't know why this uh, pointer is not working here there's some issue with the pointer that's why i have to write and show you otherwise it is so sn is nothing but a naught so we'll take all these values these are your pn sequence of length 15. okay so let us take that first of all balance property so this is the pn sequence that we got here triple zero a naught column so triple zero one double zero double one zero one triple one so this particular column here okay these values so run property if you count the number of zeros which is in black color so three plus two plus one so total seven zeros how many runs we have so i have given this formula for runs if m is equal to four four uh, flip flops so 2 raised to m minus 1 that is 2 raised to 4 minus 1 total runs are 4 so out of 8 okay first property is balance property 8 ones and 7 zeros you can see here 8 ones and 7 zeros so you can count here and see to it now next is run property so m is equal to 4 total runs are coming 8 you can see here total runs are coming 8 out of it half what is half of 8 4 4 should be of length 1 okay I have written here out of 8 half that means 4 will be of length 1 out of remaining 4 okay we'll go to that next let us see the first so if this is the sequence the same sequence i have just expanded it so to provide little space okay again this is 15 bit sequence okay if you see this statement here out of eight half that means four will be of length one okay so let us see that one two three four these four are of length one see runs means consecutive zeros and ones so in a complete group these four which are box inside green box they are of length one consecutive single so they, their length is one then again go back okay to second statement out of remaining for half means two will be of length two so let us see which two are these so first one these zero zero see consecutive runs and this you see their length is two two now next the last one out of remaining two half that means one will be of length one i have written a typo error one will be of length three i should write here three one will be of length three okay so let us see which is of length three yeah this is of length three and so on you keep on going like this okay so keep in mind when i say run means consecutive series of ones and zeros okay so out of 8, 4 will be of length 1, that is only 1 bit. Remaining 4, out of 4, 2 will be of length 2. We have seen two boxes. Okay. These boxes. 
they were of length 2 bit after remaining 2 1 will be of length 3 so we have seen and it goes on okay like this so this is how we do uh, this is important this is really important concept and uh, this is has, uh, has been coming in many university exams okay last one is correlation property in correlation property what we do is we use Kronika delta function so first of all what is our pn sequence sn okay this was our pn sequence okay now this has to convert it into polar form that means whatever zeros you have will be represented by minus one volt and whatever ones you have will be represented by plus one volt and that will be represented as sm so you can see here wherever you had 0 0 it was represented by minus 1 volt wherever you have bits as 1 are represented at plus 1 volt see the one which is written in red and black is are bits the one which is written as minus 1 and plus 1 are voltages analog voltages okay plus 1 volt and minus 1 volt so, so now what you do you can do simply correlation you can go back to the formula first you put n is equal to 0 next time you put n is equal to 1 so case number 1 if I put n is equal to 0 if I put n is equal to 0 in this formula I'll get this see SM, here if I put 0 it becomes R0 n is equal to 0 R0 here if I put it will become SM into SM SM is square and if you square all of these 15 times of 1s and add them because there is a summation here you will get 15 for sure and 15 is nothing but the length so that's what is mentioned here n is the length of pn sequence next if you put n is equal to 1 it is the next case if you put n is equal to 1 okay here what you get sm and sm plus 1 that means the current bit and the next bit so you have to multiply minus 1 with minus minus 1 with minus 1 okay plus minus 1 with minus 1 see here I am saying if you can see here minus 1 with minus 1 then again minus 1 with minus 1 you keep on doing grouping like this and keep on adding you will see you will get overall summation should be equal to minus 1 you will end up getting minus 1 only so we have proved all the three properties okay this property says that when you put n is equal to 0 you should get equal to length of pn sequence when you put n is equal to 1 you should get minus 1 so we can do both of it i hope you understood what i'm saying is you take this minus 1 and this minus 1 and multiply minus 1 and minus